Without water, there is no life. Water makes up more than half of our body mass and is essential for our bodies to survive and function properly. Over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, of which only 2.5% is fresh water. Many of us take our access to water for granted. Do you know where your water comes from? Is it a nearby river? A lake? A groundwater aquifer? Now think about how much water you use. The average American household of four consumes 400 gallons or 1,500 liters per day. In Africa and other regions of the developing world, many households consume as little as five gallons a day. For many of these families, women begin their day with mile-long treks to the nearest source of water to collect enough water for the day's drinking, cooking and cleaning. At one mile, I wish my day could start like yours. On a gentle walk to school, and later to a shopping mall. A party or a local park. At two miles I contemplate what it's like at your place. To turn a tap and see the flow of water for a clean of teeth, a drink, a shower and a wash of clothes. At three miles I think of you. Perhaps you're in a swimming pool or eating at a restaurant with water bottles on your table. At four miles I asked myself whether you ever give an idle thought about my trek through scorching heat. To the spring, the riverbank, a muddy hole where I collect the dirty water I must drink. I start the four mile journey home. A full container on my back. Sometimes I daydream about other children in other countries far away from here. I wonder what the distance is of their daily water walk. Girls are twice as much likely as boys to be responsible for collecting water. Globally, one in ten people lack access to clean water. Unsafe drinking water kills more people than wars.
curiosity and interest about water began here in Choripiscopi, a small village nestled in, in between the mountains of Corfu, an island situated in the Ionian Sea of Greece. Ever since I can remember, my friends and I used to gather around this well and play in our home. I know from my, grand, from my great-grandfather and that many families would come here to collect water every day, one of the very few wells of the village. This led me to understand why our well existed, as many other homes had been dry for years. So the first question that I asked myself was whether and the dry wells was an issue specific to our village or if other places around the island had similar droughts. This led me to go visit other places around the, air, the island. of Austria, Elizabeth of Bavaria, otherwise known as Sissy, used to come to this well and drink water, and it was therefore named after her. Here, water flows abundantly into a stream. There is no infrastructure to preserve or collect this running water. At the same time, the southern part of the island suffers severe droughts during the summer. 
During the summer months, water is rationed and is often cut off for several days. Those who can afford it can have water delivered by a cistern. However, this is not a sustainable solution as it has an option available to only a few on the island and does not address the important issue of water shortage. Corfu is the island with the second most rainfall in Greece, averaging 53 inches of rainfall per year. This amount of rainfall is above the highest average annual rainfall in the north of Greece of 20 to 48 inches. And yet, most of the wells that have served generations with fresh and abundant water have dried. I asked myself, how can that be? One explanation could be that the widespread cutting down of trees as well as forest fires reduces the soil's ability to hold water, drying out the ground, triggering the desertification and leading to drought. One proposal to address had been to build two reservoirs, two water treatment plants and a reverse osmosis plant in the northern and southern parts of the island. This plan was abandoned due to lack of funding and opposition from local communities as it involved a, the confiscation of private land. While the project would have helped address the collection and redistribution of water across the island, constructing a dam may also cause drought downstream by severely reducing the flow of water. More broadly, Greece has quite abundant water resource in excess of 58 billion cubic meters per year, of which the country uses only 12%. Of that, 87% is used for agriculture, 3% by industry, and only 10% or 1.2% of total water resources for municipal water supply. However, the average masks substantial variations between years, seasons and regions. Water resources are especially scarce on the Greek islands as we just saw in Corfu. Many islands are supplied by tanker ships or have turned to seawater desalination. Historically, the inhabitants of Greek islands have also harvested winter rains from rooftops for use during the summer. But the issue of access to clean water, and therefore sanitation, is a critical issue not just in Corfu, but across major cities in the world, including Cape Town and Sao Paulo. 
Earlier this year, in February 2018, the plight of droughts hit South Africa, caught the attention of international media and the world. Isso, sei lá, já faz uns três meses ou mais que a gente tá sem água aqui em casa. Três meses, acho que é, desde novembro, por aí. Porque às vezes ficam dois dias sem água, caixas vazias, a gente fica totalmente sem água. Não tem, não tem água. São planos de contingência para o pior, independente de se vai vir a água, o que é que vão vir, porque afinal de contas não há nenhum esclarecimento para nós empresários desse setor, o que vai ser feito, qual é o momento, quais são os cortes, quais são o dia e qual é a situação. Em 2015, the United Nations created a set of global goals known as the Sustainable Development Goals. The Development Agenda identified 17 goals for a sustainable world. One of these goals identifies the need for ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water resources as well as safe water and sanitation for all. Access to water, sanitation and hygiene is a basic human right. Yet around 1.8 billion people use a source of drinking water that is contaminated by feces. Water scarcity affects more than 40% of the global population and is projected to rise. 
More than 80% of wastewater resulting from human activities is discharged into rivers or the sea without any treatment leading to pollution. The effects of this are that more than 800 children die every day from diseases linked to poor hygiene. By managing our water sustainably, we are also able to better manage the production of food and energy and contribute to sustainable economic growth. We can help preserve our water ecosystems, biodiversity, and take action on climate change. It is. Earlier this year, the U.S. administration has formally suspended a major Obama-era clean water regulation ahead of plans to issue its own version of the rule later this year. President Trump has taken aim at the bitterly contested rule known as Waters of the United States. The Obama Clean Water Regulation, which would have limited the use of pollutants like chemical fertilizers that could run off into small streams, came under fierce criticism from the rural landowners that made up a key component of Mr. Trump's political base. On March 16 of this year, one day after new data revealed widespread toxic water contamination near coal ash disposal sites, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, announced a proposal to repeal the very 2015 EPA safeguards that had required this data to be tracked and released in the first place. This proposal clears the way for polluters and politicians to weaken the standards for groundwater monitoring and coal ash cleanups and attacks severe coal health and environmental protections included in the standard that was enacted in 2012. The North Carolina 2014 Dan River coal ash spill is but one example of the need for strict regulations when it comes to water pollution. The EPA's latest proposal would replace science-based federal requirements that would fairly and consistently address water quality issues nationwide with a patchwork of state-by-state -state requirements that can easily be influenced by polluter in interests. As I reflect on my journey from the dried well in my house and those across my village and consider the port distribution and access to water across the island, I realize now that this is the biggest issue facing our planet. In 2015, the World Economic Forum named water crisis as the greatest risk to economies, environments and people. The risk of water crisis outranked threats such as nuclear weapons and global disease pandemic. We need to keep governments accountable and generate awareness of how we, we are wasting and polluting our most valuable resource on Earth, one without which nothing can exist.